What is going on everyone? My name is Shaq Mac and today I have a little tutorial for you. Now these videos have quite slowly become some of my favorite videos to make because you guys really enjoy them. For example, my Spotlight Sim tutorial that I did back in the first Spotlight Sim challenges has over 7,000 views. I had no expectations of how that video would go and it smashed out the park. You guys loved it and I was really nervous to upload that one. So thank you for the response. So today I am going to show you the basics of sniping or at least sniping on how on certain sets and when I say certain sets for the most part I am going to be using the Showtime set that came out a couple days ago and also going to be telling you how to do it on the upcoming throwback playoff spotlights as they are the ones to come out next they're coming out very soon and by the time this video comes up you will probably be either a few hours away or they'll already be out and you need help getting some extra MT from it I am very new to sniping, hence why I've called this video the basics of sniping or basic sniping tutorial because I'm not an expert in any means. There could be a lot more people who know how to snipe a hell of a lot better than me. But I also have things that kind of put me off, such as the fact that I'm from Australia. So servers here aren't as fast as they are in things like Northern America and places like that because that's where servers and main place is usually located and how everyone gets so quick with their fast internet speeds is being in different regions because oceanic regions and oceanic service are absolute dog shit. So obviously there's things that are out of hand that I really can't change. Otherwise I'd absolutely be able to do a hell of a lot more, but I have found out a way to snipe pretty well. Just in the last day, other than today, I think yesterday, that full 24 hours, I was able to make about 300k MT. Now, the reason I couldn't make that much today, about 100 to 150k MT, is mainly because it is the second day, third day, it's just a later day of the promo. Newer promos usually can earn more MT from doing. But with this Showtime promo, it has been so, so nice. A lot of really decent cards. Also, all the the time, especially in deluxe packs, you're pulling at least diamond or higher. And it makes that makes it a hell of a lot easier because people like to put cards up a little bit cheaper. Hence why you'll be able to snipe a little bit easier. And hence why that's why I'm gonna bring you to the diamond filter to start this all off. Now the diamond cards for the showtime set are Kyrie Irving, Muggsy Bogues, Sean Bradley, and Hot Rod Williams. Those are the four diamonds that are in this set, and they all go for around 1,700 to 1,750k MT. Now, the settings you want to put on these cards to snipe them to start off is you want to put it onto a diamond tier color, obviously put it onto the Showtime theme, and then you put the maximum buyer to 1,450. Now, you can go lower, but the high highest you can possibly go is 1,500 because quick selling a card at diamond tier is 1,500 KMT. And if you're selling a diamond card for 1,650 KMT, usually that means it's a loss. You'd much rather be better off quick selling the card. And that means if you do want to make a profit on your cards either way, you'd be selling them at the minimum 1,700. However, snipes do appear, which is why I put my settings at 1,450 because I'm still making some MT, but I'm also getting them super cheap. As you can see here, there are a few cards that popped up within the 20 minutes of sniping I did. I got Kyrie Irving two times for 1,350. I got another card, I believe Hot Rod Williams for 1,350. I think I got Sean Bradley for about 1,350. I'm not too sure, but it will show up on the screen. But I do remember that Muggsy Bogues, I had two that came up for 1,000. And that's why I think Diamond Tears are all right to go sniping for because especially on day one or absolute first release of the cards you will find diamond tier cards coming out of this filter over and over and over again it, ca it happens a little less as days go on i found that on average i got a diamond tier card every three minutes which is all right it's okay but at the same time it's not as good as release day content and obviously this differs on each set but i will talk about the throwbacks later as i mentioned i just want to show you what it'll be like for the next few days when spot when showtime is still here because they're not going to be often showing up but about every three minutes you will have a diamond tier cards show up. Now the reason I don't use the diamond tier too much is there isn't much space for cards to come up in. As, I, as you know, 
the tier, the card amount that we've set is 1,450, and there's not too much space, and there's not too much potential profit that could come in that area, but at the same time, there's probably going to be less people on it, and you have a chance of earning quick MT that way. I found that Muggsy Bogues, when he shows up for 1,450, or even 1,400, Muggsy Bogues is one of the easiest ones to get, same as Hot Rod Williams. Kyrie, Sean Bradley are two different ideas because they're just a little bit better. Kyrie for namesake and Sean Bradley because he's super tall. But usually cards like Muggsy Bokes and Hot Rod Williams are easy to obtain. Get, sell back for 1,700 for quick profit. Don't worry about how much profit you're making. Just know that with 1,450, you're getting a somewhat decent profit at minimum 80 MT per card, which will go to a lot more if you find, if you manage to get a card at 500 MT. I can't n naturally do that because of my server connection, but for people with better connection, it'll be a hell of a lot easier for, to, for you to do so. I'm not, not going to go too much further into this, however. Just know that I usually like to do this one maybe like after I've finished a triple threat game. I'll do it till I get a snipe, put that one up, and then go play a quick triple threat game because often I don't like trying to stay on a snipe filter for too long because you could be earning MT from playing triple threat threat at the same time and sometimes when you're playing triple threat you are earning a bit more and it's a bit easier than just sitting on a filter over and over again even if you're getting 1450 over and over and over again but i'm going to go to pink diamond filter now now this is the one i like to use the most because there is a decent sample space i can usually pick one up for a good profit margin and this pr this filter is often able to get all four cards maybe not lebron as much lebron being obviously the the, the highest MT card, but I've been able to get Danny Manning, I've been able to get Nate Robinson, and I've been able to get Penny Hardaway all from this filter. As you can see, I got Penny Hardaway for about 4,300, I believe, and then sold him back for about 6,000 MT, which is a nice turnaround. Nate Robinson is the cheapest, and I usually put him up for about 5,000 MT, as you can see, but he's the one that shows up the most, and I have my pink diamond filter set at 4,450k MT because usually the minimum a card goes up for me is 5,000 MT. So you take into a fact that you do have that 10% tax, which I hope 2k takes out in, in future 2ks. If you're putting up your card for 5,000, it means you're getting 4,500 back. So I like to have it set one down so that at least if I am getting pink diamond, pull, pink diamond cards at 4,450, I'm still getting that 50, 50 MT return, which trust me, Small returns like that, do not stress too much about if you think it's not enough because you've got a bigger sample size. You have cards that go for more. You can potentially pick up cards that go as low as 1,000 MT. I've even seen a LeBron James at 500 MT before. Obviously, that was incredibly tough to pick up. I haven't got it recorded, but it was a while ago. It was the day that I was able to get around 300k MT in one day. But on release day, people put cards up for cheap. So you really want to make the most of day one of each set of content. But when looking at the prices for them, as I said, Nate Robinson goes for 5,000. Penny Hardaway goes for 6,000. I think Danny Manning also goes for 6,000. And LeBron goes for for about 15 if I'm correct. I'm not too sure, but he's showing up on the screen right now. Now for basic snipers who are in NBA 2K, trying to earn some MT, sometimes it's very, very tough to get constant amount of MT, or maybe you're taking so long to get one snipe and it's only 50K, 50 MT return. What I like to do is every now and then put on a jersey filter. So I go to home jerseys and away jerseys. Lately, I've been putting my jerseys onto 250 MT, but if that stuff to dry up and there's nothing there, put it up to 300. 300 MT for both home and away jerseys usually bring up a hell of a lot of jerseys. Unfortunately, with this one, I only got three. I think it was two from home and one from away. But I've had times where there is literally like 12 or 13 home and then 10 away jerseys. And you get that all for 300 MT. Some you can pick up for 250. And then at the very minimum, you're putting the card up for 400 MT. Now, this is what I like to call the quantity move because obviously you're only getting 60 MT return if you are paying for 300 MT and then selling it for 400. But there's times where you get so many jerseys that that small little buy out of all the jerseys, you end up getting a hell of a lot more MT than you would get with a snipe that you get from a diamond card. And so I do this every now and then when I try to fill out my auction house because as everyone knows who tries 
does try to earn FT MT off sniping, it is very important to have 50 auctions running at all times. Obviously, it's difficult to do, but if you can have 50 auctions running, you're earning the most MT. So I use this almost as a filler. It is a quantity. And then if you can do that every now and then, it actually earns you a bit of MT. So basically what I do to make sure that I'm getting the right price set and earning the most I can, because sometimes I'll put them up for 450. Sometimes I'll put them up for 500. When you get really lucky with some gold jerseys, sometimes you can put them up for hell a hell of a lot, like 1,000 for some of them. I think usually the Thunder jerseys go for that much. But usually what I look for when selling those jerseys is I go to the card, say for the example, this Kings card, the classic home 14, 16 Kings. What I usually do is I go home 14 Kings. And then what I do is I quickly go down to historic uniforms. I then go to the Western Conference side of things, go over to Kings and then flip the page I've done it that many times. Home 14 Kings is right there. You look for those three different spots. Home 14 Kings. Or for example, you've got home 97 Knicks. Even class, even alt 95 Heat. You just need to look out for those three things and you can go through them super quickly. Now, as much as I do like that filter, it doesn't earn all that much MT. You don't do it all the time. Even if you get super lucky with the card, you're only earning maybe like 500 MT back. We're going to go to the Galaxy Opal filters. Now for Showtime and all the other sets, I don't think it matters too much. I have an idea as to how things can go. So for example, I'm going to use the Chris Webber, the Galaxy Opal Chris Webber that came out with the Showtime set. He is at a buy now around 70k MT. So if you take 70k into a fact, you want to put your your card down enough that you're getting around a over a thousand MT return. So what I've chosen, the good thing about this Chris Webber filter is that you technically don't even need to have Chris Webber there. In hindsight, I probably would have taken the Chris Webber name off. I would have just gone straight up Showtime filter under 61k and you could even potentially pick up some even better Galaxy Opals. I've seen on Twitter Galaxy Opal Shack go for 700 MT. So if you can have, if you're doing a Chris Webber Opal filter, you could just completely get rid of his name. He is the only Galaxy Opal to buy now at this current time. So you could get rid of his name and you'd be absolutely fine. You're still going to return with any Galaxy Opal you get. But Chris Webber is the one you'll find pretty much comes up 99% of the time. Now the lucky thing for me here, I expected to sit here for the 20 minutes and think and I thought it was going to go for a while. However, within the second refresh of the filter, I managed to pick up a Chris Webber for 60,000 MT. People do put them up for cheaper prices than they are actually going for. Whether that's just because they're lazy or they're annoyed they got that pull, they put them up for a bit cheaper so they can just get the MT straight back. So that person who I took their Chris Webber off their hands, they're getting 54 and 50 cork. 54k MT, sorry, straight away. They probably just didn't want to wait too long. They just wanted to get the card. Sorry, get the MT. So I was able to grab that, put that one back up for 69,750 MT. I put it for a little bit cheaper so I, make, I could make sure it sold the next time I checked it out. So then I kept on doing the filter thinking that I may actually get a hell of a lot more than I thought. But 20 minutes rolled by, nothing really showed up. But within the last minute of my 20 minutes, I got another Chris Webber card for about 60,200. I think it was, but it was around the same amount. So I then picked him up and then sold him for 70,000 MT, as you can see right here. And then we go down towards the bottom. That 69,750 Chris Webber has actually sold. And I've earned 2,000, uh, around 2,000 to 3,000 MT just off that. Now, the good thing about this is... Once, as I said, different Galaxy Opals can show up, but prices do get lower than that. The lowest I have seen a Chris Webber go for was under 20k, about 19,750. All right, it's just a guesstimate from what I can get in my head. But this Chris Webber can potentially be a MT Turner. If you can get him going really hot, or you can get these buy now cards, and you can kind of scope out their, their profit price, you can earn some serious MT from it on release day. So say, for example, there's a card that's gone to a buy now of 90,000 MT. What I would do for something like that, knowing that the fil knowing that the 10% tax is going to take 9,000 MT away from it, I put my filter to about 80,000 MT and then look for that certain player where there is the cheapest, however, then I kind of just let it go in case I get another decent pull. 
or another decent snipe. I then snipe all the cards that come under 80,000 KMT and then put them back up for a profit again. It's simple stuff, making sure that you've got the right amount of price, keeping in mind the tax, and you can get some really nice profits from this Chris Webber. Now, obviously there are bigger and better ones, but these are purely release day. I have been looking for a shack snipe all day, but I haven't gotten a single one. But on release day, I managed to get three Galaxy Opal Shack Snipes, as well as missing a hell of a lot of different Shacks. Now, although the price does get cheaper, at the same time, people don't rip those packs as much as the days go on. So Shaquille O'Neal, you won't get as many Snipes unless it's day one, because it's around 150k to 200 to start off, and I usually aim for that area. I realized Pascal Siakam was a nice one, and he went for about 160 60k. So I've realized that 150 to 200k MT price range is the safest bet to simply put their name up, go to their collection, and then put minimum buy at 500. Look for a buy now card. However, a card like Jimmy Butler, I don't like trying to snipe for that card, especially now because he's going for about 110 to 120k MT. And if you manage to snipe him or so called snipe him for 100k MT and your card only sells for 100 10 you've made a loss and so there is a risk with Jimmy Butler that I am not willing to take plus Jimmy Butler won't show up as much as cards like Chris Webber so you may as well not worry about Jimmy Butler and Rashad Lewis is 1.5 mil so unless you're you unless you have a lot of time to snipe you can put up Rashad Lewis and then have a minimum buyout and then just go crazy with his snipe, uh, snipe selection but I wouldn't suggest doing that because only the best will get that card at a snipe I've seen Space Lord Bird do it and He's just an insane sniper, so I'm not even going to try and test that. But what I like to do with other sets, such as the throwback playoff moments that we're getting tomorrow, or however long it is from now, I'm not too sure where you're from, day or night, however it is, but the throwback playoff moments, I know for sure, are going to be completely different games. So what I do is, depending on what the Galaxy Opals are, you look for that 150k, 200k MT card, and then try and snipe that one. I'd at least try and do that one before anything else because that's the one that's going to be popping the most or may not necessarily pop the most but he's definitely going to give you some of the best profit. The diamond cards, it's really up to how they turn out because I know I think it was Daquan Cook was a Miami Heat. Sorry about playoff moments that I did try to snipe a little bit. He was going for around 4k. He wasn't going as low as these Showtime cards so I kind of had to see what his price ended up being then take in the fact tax just taking in the fact tax and then seeing how much profit you want to make is really, really important. If a diamond card is going for 3k, then maybe I'll put up a different kind of buy now tactic where I'll maybe put him at 2,500. If he's going for 4k, then maybe I'll put him at 3,500 or 3,250, depending on how much his card is actually coming out. But I know for a fact it all comes down to what the card ends up going for buy now. If it's a bid, aim for 150, 200k. Go and try and snipe that one. If he's less than 150, I'd try and stay away. And then these buy now Galaxy Opals as well. They're very nice to snipe on release day because they show up a hell of a lot more than I think a 150 to 200k snipe would go for. I think out of all of them on release day, Chris Webber or the Chris Webber kind of snipe where he's like at a buy now, it'd probably be the best one because you could potentially get the snipes of the 150 to 200k. It's all very tough to try and explain without confusing the hell out of you guys because this is really confusing the hell out of me in a way but I hope that you guys can understand I'm trying my best to compare the Showtime snipes to the rest of the snipes and the snipe filters you can use for the rest of NBA 2K20 but I hope that you guys were able to learn a bit about sniping today I know that obviously I'm not the best sniper I'm not the best tutorial person but you guys really enjoyed the spotlight sim one and I thought I could give a bit of tips and tricks on my end for this one because I know that I had a lot of fun sniping. I've earned a hell of a lot of MT from doing so and I've kind of found a bit of fun playing 2k again. It's helped me create content a bit better. But anyways guys, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment down below any video ideas, suggestions and constructive criticism and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Almost at 700 subscribers and any boost to get me there, I'd be super duper appreciated so please be sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.